In this episode, we are going to hang ten with the surfing culture. We're going to meet some people who are making water sports fun, pleasurable, and safe in Vietnam. And we're going to meet and hang out with Dong Lang and her great music. Mm. Also, we're going to be trying a dish that you can't go past Central Vietnam without trying, mi quang. Well, so it's all about sun, surf, beaches, fun, and seafood. And seafood. Okay, great. We'll eat at one of the top spots where you get to choose your own. Sounds fantastic. Yeah, let's go with the show and meet, you know, a very unique singer, Dong Lang. Let's fantastic. go. Fantastic. Let's go. Dong Lang is a beautiful white flower in the music scenes of Vietnam at the moment. And today, Spicy is very lucky to have a chance meeting with her in her very busy schedule. Hi, Dong Lang. Hi, everyone. Uh, how are you today? So how would you describe your musical style? My style is mixed with many kind of music like pop, electric, and jazz. I really love to play jazz. What made you fall in love with jazz? Just imagine like if someone give you uh, wings and you feel very freedom and you think you can fly, so jazz can do this for me. Hmm, well, I would love to fly too. Okay, we fly together. <laughs> <laughs> so we all know that you sing a lot of French love songs. Why are you really into the French love songs? I can call it destiny, my destiny. Destiny. I start French language in high school, and also I feel that Vietnamese song and French song have some similar, like a beautiful lyric, beautiful melody. Simple but beautiful. After one time, I won a French singing contest. In Vietnam, with the song La Vie en Rose. Il la tendre dans mon cœur une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause. C'est toi pour moi, moi pour toi dans la vie. Il m'a Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Goosebumps everywhere. <laughs> I never can forget this feeling. I decided to follow a friend mm. song. So since you started your music career, what were the challenges that you had to face? I started singing so late. I think most people in Vietnam, they're shy if they're different, be different. Yes. But I think people have to power if they're different when you want. Yes. And I think have a trend the way thinking mm. and you different, you good. Thank you very much for your time and just stay beautiful, stay romantic and stay happy <laughs> and then okay. go explore the world. Oh, okay, thank you, <laughs> so, Annie. Thank you. Don't you ever, ever forget me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Coming into such a coastal city like Da Nang, mm -hmm. nobody can miss the seafood here. Absolutely, and we're really lucky today we're going to such a beautiful restaurant. Bé An Restaurant, this brand name, has mm -hmm. been around for like 15 years. The special thing here is they don't have a menu. We're literally going to go over to the corner of the restaurant, pick out the fresh fish and seafood, and they're going to prepare it exactly how we need it. So it's really impressive, really amazing. So we're going to have shrimp as our first dish. Fantastic, excellent, okay. Come beautiful. Wow. Okay, it's big. All right, pretty impressive. Here we have the fried salted shrimp. Oh my God, it's huge. Mm, I have to say that the shrimp is so fresh. Oh, we got our next dish as well. Fantastic. Yes. We're having some one day sun dried squid. Let's have some. All right, let's try it out. Let's try some of this. 
liquid, there's so many different ways to prepare it, right? I think because it's chewy, so it creates a new kind of texture, which is quite interesting to me. Mm, absolutely, yeah. But it's absolutely fresh. I am thinking about moving from Saigon, actually, to Da Nang right now. <laughs> so we're moving on to the third dish. The crazy-looking fish. I'm interested to see how they brought it out, though. Wow, OK. Oh, my god. Yeah. <laughs> The pipefish, it looks more like a dragon, kind of all around like this. It's pretty amazing looking. Oh. We have got some virgin leaf here. Yep. So I think that we are supposed to roll it wrap up. Wrap it all up. All right, wrap it all up together. Oh, but it's so fresh. It's stick into the, the bone. Really nice. What do you think? Mm, really, really good. Fantastic. This is a very special, a unique touch mm -hmm. to the flavor. Mustardy taste with this, with this leaf. We're gonna clams. have clams. Yay! Okay, fantastic. And this is a nice big heap of clams, which are steamed with lemongrass. They're brand new. They're fresh, beautiful clams. Got a little bit of a spicy taste with the lemongrass as well. So first of all, don't forget to make the sauce. I'm gonna use my hand. Okay, sounds good. Mm. Very yummy. Mm. So fresh. Mm -hmm. Really nice smell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oozes in my mouth. Oozes in your mouth. Ready for our last dish? I've definitely got space for this, absolutely. We have spider crab. Spider crab. This is, I believe, a tamarind sauce, which is kind of a combination of sweet and sour. It looks amazing. I guess hands again? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, okay. okay. So I'm going to grab this bit of a monster piece here, and then uh, I guess I'm going to dismember it a little bit. Uh, so we'll get these out of the way. I'll come back to those later. And then... To get this one, get the claws out, crack it through. Uh, uh. Let's give it a try. Oh, we've got a little oh, bit. It's really fresh. Okay. Yummy. Mm. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> As you can see from the state of my hands, and now I'm going to get them cleaned up, then we can move on. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's clean up. As we've been here, the place is completely filled up. So if you are in Da Nang, make sure you check out the seafood here because you're not going to regret it. Geographically, we get good good swell here, we get good waves when the conditions are right. And we also get amazing wind, and the wind is generated, and we're surrounded inland by sand dunes. And obviously the sand dunes create a, an amazing thermic wind early in the morning and builds up up until sunset. So this is why we get such good wind here to be able to go kiting. Cái, cái môn nước ván này hôm trước thì mình có đi làm rồi mình thấy người nước ngoài người ta chơi rồi mình chơi thử rồi từ đó rồi cái mình thích luôn tại vì làm mình làm cái môn nước ván này á là là mình thấy được cái thể lực cái sức khỏe của mình được tốt rồi với lại cái cảm giác mình khi mình ra ngoài nước á là mình không có suy nghĩ một cái thứ gì ở trên bờ á mình cảm thấy từ đó mình thích I'd, I'd, I'd say Moine is definitely in Asia, one of the top wind spots. It's it's 
A lot of people from Australia, from New Zealand, actually will come here specifically for a kiteboarding holiday. They'll, they'll, they'll come for two weeks, hoping that they're going to catch as much wind as possible. And in that two weeks, usually you're going to get a lot of wind. Before, when I'm young, so I, I love it, you know, I love this sport, like 15 years already. But I want uh, something to grow up more. I will do this, but so now I, uh, I make the boat now, we bear the boat. Before, when I'm young, I see uh, one uh, guy, he surf, and I keep dreaming, you know, about him, what he do, what he surf. And I keep practice, like this time now, I feel like I'm so much happy right now. Have good sponsor from board, surf board have. Also have Ripco sponsor for T-shirt and all the clothes. But I hope uh, they sponsor stronger, you know, so I can do sport more, can boost harder. Because of my personal love of actually being at the beach, being on the water, you can see that Vietnamese riders also have that in the riding they do, the daily lifestyle they have. They have the surf culture built into them. And you, you can see that from just, just watching, from just talking to, to young Vietnamese riders, you can see that they had that love of the water, they had the love of the ocean, something I wanted to coax out of them to help them take that next step to, to actually doing something with it rather than just loving it. Đà Nẵng undoubtedly offers the best beach and urban vibes. Today, let's meet Mr. Gonzalo and find out why Đà Nẵng is such a popular place to learn surfing. Because the waves are very suitable for beginners. It's not so big, it don't have rocks, it's no danger. The water is warm, it's comfortable, don't have uh, danger animals, sometimes have small jellyfish, yes. but in the summer, but it's not a problem. Most of your students, are they are tourists or the locals are learning as well? Now is the tourists. I try to achieve to the locals, to teach the surf to the locals, but it's not been easy. The locals don't see the, the ocean like a playground yet. I hope they will. Now in this moment is growing a lot. Lots of expats living here, bring the surfboards, start to surfing here, start to showing to the to the locals how to surf, teaching the people they don't know how to surf, they're just using the board. That's it. And some lots of foreigners also came here because when they go to Indonesia, the best spot in the world to surf is really, really crowded. And they prefer here where you have a empty lineup with warm water, it's perfect. Okay. So you've been living in Vietnam a while now. Do you think it's a big issue to kind of promote education in safety, especially with, with the beaches and also the rivers? Yeah, of course, education is the key um, to most things in, in, in life. I've been here for 13 years and uh, one child drowns every 45 seconds in Asia. Um, we've had uh, around 11,000 drownings per year in Vietnam, um, and it's just not acceptable. When you look at Australia and, and the work they've done on preventing uh, drownings in the surf environment, we thought that we could bring that experience here and eradicate some of those drownings very quickly. Before your organisation started, what was the kind of safety regulations that were happening on the beach here? There's always been lifeguards, but um, I've surfed here for over 13 years in Vietnam, and um, I never saw a lifeguard swim. So, and I had to perform quite a few rescues myself. Really? And that's when we decided that, hey, this is uh, fairly serious and we need to get something happening. I must admit now that the government's done a great job and the lifeguards have become a lot more proactive. Right. But they've learned also that the, the best way to save people is not let them get into a difficult situation. So stopping them going into the water when it's rough, when it's dangerous, is the key. Right. And having the confidence to do that culturally is really difficult for a Vietnamese local to to go up to a, a big strapping Aussie and tell him not to go in the water. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's not so easy. So that's been something we've tried to develop as well, that, that you are the expert. So you should uh, exert some confidence and show these people that, hey, look, it's dangerous. We're here to help you, so please don't go in the water. What about the future? Do you have any plans for future? Oh, yeah, I have no, full no. of plans to be here. <laughs> I want to, to have a surf camp yes. where the tourists arrive. They stay in my surf camp. Then I take them to the Oyan. Then I surf in Oyan. Then I come back. Then I go to Hue with them. Then we go to the beach. Come a bit surf trip down. We stop. We surf. We can go to Lanco to do stand-up paddle. I want to show the Vietnam and always with surfing. 
So in Asia, it's definitely, I would say, in the top three of the, the places to go. Around the world, it's becoming a little bit more known. It's uh, obviously, the cost of living here is fairly cheap. You can come on holiday and you, you can spend you know, as little as you want or as much as you want to make that holiday both good for yourself kiting and surfing wise and also, you know, there's other aspects of Moine which, uh, which are fun. eating mui wang, it's a crying shame. Is it different to other kinds of noodles? Very different. It's a very distinguished taste. And also, the noodle itself, it has a unique shape and size. Ah, okay, great. So we should probably order some, uh, yes. get a couple of bowls? Yes. All right, what have we got? Obviously, this one's familiar. We've got just a boiled egg. As you can see, the noodle is unique, different shape and size. Yeah. In some places, the noodle is the yellow color. Yeah. But yeah. I've heard that the original is white. Okay. And then we have pork and egg and uh, shrimp. It's got a bit of everything. Excellent. All right, yeah. so. All of these are local herbs. We can see uh, mint, mm -hmm. banana flowers. This is a must in oh, yeah. Mi Wang. So what I would do is a little bit. All right. And don't forget this, the uh, rice cracker. Do they make that here? I think so. Yeah? Okay. Try to mix it up. They only use enough amount of broth to absorb into the noodle and to soften the vegetable. I would like to show you something very special. Green chili. So okay. this green chili is not as spicy as the red one. I'll start with yours. the <laughs> I won't do too much. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's not too <laughs> it's bad. No, it's not too bad. Right, last but not least, this is what they call Da Nang, spring rolls. Okay, so I'll go first, I guess. All right. Is it beef? Pork. <laughs> Pork. It is good. If you want to eat it as a local, you have to really crack it smash and it up. smash it up. All right. We have to act like a local. All right, just smash it up. It is uh, smashed it up, That's you think? That looks smashed to me. All right, so we get some more. <laughs> so it's a really unique taste. It's pretty interesting. I would say a big fan, yeah. If I'm in Da Nang, I'll definitely come here. This is an awesome dish to try if you're ever in the beach at Da Nang. Try out Mi Guang. Don't forget to check this out. Hi guys, today we're with Charlie Nguyen, who can be credited with kicking off the contemporary movie scene in Vietnam today. I'm doing good. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. So how did you get started in, uh, in filmmaking in general? Comics book. Comic books? Yes. When I was maybe uh, third grade, I'm completely addicted to comics. The reason I like comics is, you know, I, I, I hate reading. I'm, I'm such, a, <laughs> such a slow reader, you know, and right, it just right, picture right. go, oh, yeah, it's books, but it's all images, you know, it's great. <laughs> and I think that's how it started. It's story, telling story uh, visually through images. Sure. You know, it's just a natural progression of, mm -hmm. of that, you know, extension, if you will. So your brother is also involved in the film industry as well. He's also worked with you on some of your projects. How have you found that dynamic? Do you argue or do you work together well? How, how do you find it? Sometimes we debate. Sometimes when we're doing fight scenes or action sequences. Right. Because he's action director for all my movies. Oh, really? Yeah, so he choreographed. He shot him, he edit, he put put the whole action sequences together in his mind right. and on video and, and cut it together. So when we go out there, it's just execution. But sometimes we debate on a certain uh, character beat, you know, because mm. I like to design the, the fights or the, the actions to go with the character. Right. If he has a Taekwondo background, you then we would incorporate a lot of kicks into his movement. Of course, yeah. And if somebody who has, uh, you know, grappling or judo, mm. then we'll take a advantage of that. Sometimes it's just character. You know, I just like this guy to be invincible and strong. All his movement are strong and straight right. and, and forward. And sometimes I like a character to be a little bit elusive, right. you know, and, and cunning. Then I like his movement to somehow 
reflect that. No, yes, yeah. exactly. So how do you see the industry developing right now? Vietnam right now has the highest rate of growth in wow. terms of a theaters, multiplex. Mm -hmm. And it's been 30% on an average every year growth, mm -hmm. you know, in box office. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Because in other country, it's it's already picked out. Mm. And in Vietnam, is still doing this. At 30% a year compounded. When you first started, I understand you haven't had the easiest time in the film industry. Can you tell me some stories about how you got started and some of the challenges you faced? Filmmaking is a war, you know? It's a <laughs> battle every day. You go out and you fight for every shot. You start moving the camera, you start moving the actor. You have all these moving pieces, you know, within a shot. It's sure. extremely challenging. Your focus puller is not up to par. Your lighting, your grip, your dolly guy, you know, everybody. You know, when you give them a hard shot, you know, you struggle. It's a, become a challenge for them. Right. You know, because they're not used to moving the camera. Right. You know, running with the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, chasing somebody with the camera. Right. Or operating a crane that, you know, we push in the dolly and then you, we go through something and you crane up and you have to land on the perfect ending frame where you just keep pushing the crew to the to the limit, to mm. the edge. And they go, okay, we, you know, they just, you broke them because they yeah. can't deliver what you want. And it's make it fun because you, you know, that, oh, it's there, you know, people can get that shot, but we can get, we cannot get that shot. It's fun because you, now you are facing with a challenge. Yeah. It's like, you go, oh, okay, look at all, you know, you know, we got to get there, but how? You know? Yeah. So you have to think with the limited resources and, and money that you have. <laughs> Uh, I know you've been working on Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2. Um, how was that? The company that picked up the Rebel, the Weinstein company, Harvey Weinstein, right. 10 years ago. Ever since then, we maintain a relationship. From time to time, I was working on this thing before Crouching Tiger in London. I went there to shoot a week of just action stuff of a movie that he bought. And right. he didn't like the action. And so he go, hey, Charlie, when you go to London and, and reshoot the whole action sequences. So I would go and, and, and you know, do these little small job, you know, yeah, from yeah. time to time. Because I heard Crouching Tiger 2 for like, for the past 10 years. Well, 14 years 14, ago. Yeah. Yes, 14 years ago. So he bought the whole series, which is like six books. The whole series, you know, that the movie were based on. He wanted to make the part two for a whole decade already. Right. He couldn't get the project started, you know, up until last year, finally put it together. And he's go, oh, you know, I want you to come on. I want you to go to New Zealand and you are going to be a co-producer and a second unit director. Well, you know, because we don't have enough producer in New Zealand and you're going to be working with a team from China, you know, Yun Wu Ping, which is yeah, the yeah. martial art choreographer of the first uh, movie. Mm. So somehow Harvey thought that I, I, I speak Chinese, but I don't. <laughs> right? It's an interesting project mm. because there are four directors on the show, but the only one, Yun Wu Ping is the only director who has director name. All of us who direct the film get producer credits because it, the movie is in English and Yung Wu Ping doesn't speak English. <laughs> right. All the drama parts get split up uh, by three guys. Morton Tilden, the guy who did Imitation Game, yeah, who got nominated for an Oscar. And Peter Berg did, you know, Battleships and Hancock and all these huge The movies, Kingdom, right? all these big Hollywood films, and myself. So we took turn, you know, produce for each other when we're not directing. And that's how it just came to be. Uh, all the big stuff, you know, horses and, and all these big, with Donnie and Michelle, Michelle yeah, Yeo yeah, yeah. and Donnie Yen. I flew back to Vietnam and then a week later, Harvey wrote me an email and he's go, hey, Charlie, I'm promoting you to producer. I yeah, hope that's okay with you. I go, well, yeah, that's very generous. <laughs> so now I get a producer credit and a second unit. Thank you so much, Charlie, for your insights into the Vietnamese film industry. I am Charlie Nguyen, and you are watching Spicy Vietnam. Coming up next, we'll meet the guys that have been on everyone's lips, the famous metal rock band from Vietnam, Microwave. We'll meet some martial arts champions from Vietnam, from Taekwondo, Penkatsilat, to traditional Vietnamese martial arts. Duck tacos and special rolls are something you should definitely try when you come to Vietnam. And for hot people, you'll meet an amazing actor-director, Johnny Jingwing. <laughs>